My greetings to everyone. I am Professor Dr. Namita Rajput, Professor, Department of Commerce, Sri Aurobindo College, University of Delhi. In the ongoing series of Art of Being Happy, a value addition course, today we will be talking on the emotional well-being. Yes, this is the most important topic across the globe. Now, being aware of and managing your emotions in a healthy way. Our daily lives are greatly impacted by emotions, which have a deep impact on our thoughts, actions and general well-being. Our mental and emotional health can be considerably improved by being aware of the properly managing our emotions. So, in this particular lecture, we will be discussing on the value of emotional intelligence and other doable techniques for good emotional control. Now, first we need to understand about the emotional awareness, the capacity to perceive, comprehend and accept our feelings without passing judgment is referred to as emotional awareness. It entails being aware of our emotional states and how they affect the way we think and behave. Making educated decisions and cultivating self-knowledge and empathy for others are all made possible by having a strong emotional awareness. Recognizing emotions. Recognizing your emotions is the first step in regulating them. The physical sensations like a knot in the stomach, a pounding heart are frequent emotional manifestations. Additionally, focusing on our thoughts and the circumstances that set off our emotional reactions enable us to recognize the particular feelings like joy, anger, sadness, fear or surprise. We can learn more about ourselves by acknowledging and naming our emotions. Now, coming on to emotional regulation strategies. Once we are conscious of our emotions, it is crucial to create the appropriate coping mechanisms to control and manage them. So here we are discussing some of the useful methods. The first and the foremost is mindfulness. Using mindful techniques enable us to notice our emotions without passing the judgment. We may separate from strong emotions and respond rather than reacting rationally and rashly by keeping our attention in the present. The second is deep breathing. The deep diaphragmatic breathing assists in triggering the body's relaxation response which lowers the stress and fosters the emotional stability. Next is your expressive writing. Putting our feelings into writing in a journal gives us a way to express ourselves. Finding new perspectives and practical answers can all be aided by processing the difficult emotions. The next is your seeking comfort. Speaking with a dependable friend, a relative, a therapist or trying emotional moments can offer some insightful perspective and a deep comfort. The next is your self-care. The activities that make us very happy and relax us including the exercises, hobbies or time spent in nature, it might increase our emotional relevance. Now coming on to the benefits of emotional management. The advantages of effective emotion management are numerous. By encouraging the empathy, comprehension and efficient communication, it improves our relationship and the people with the higher emotional intelligence are better at handling the conflict and working with others. Additionally, Controlling emotions encourages the stress reduction, a better judgment and general mental health. So we can say emotional awareness and appropriate emotional management are basically essential for our personal development and the well-being. We can live more balanced and satisfying lives by developing the emotional awareness and putting to use the efficient emotional management techniques. 
Now, achieving emotional well-being requires us to recognize our feelings, ask for help when we need it, and the practice self-care. Now, let us start with a very pertinent topic called developing the coping mechanisms for the stress. Now, stress has permeated our lives in a fast-paced world of today. However, the stress control is very essential for our general well-being. We can navigate through difficult situations with fortitude and maintain a healthy balance if we develop a good coping techniques. So, this particular session will be about taking care of a variety of coping mechanisms that can really help and improve how we handle the stress. We have to first understand what is a stress. So, stress is the body's reaction to demands or the pressures, whether they are internal, that is the self-imposed expectations, the negative thoughts or external, that is job deadlines, financial concerns, etc. If not treated, it may show up physically, intellectually and emotionally and have an impact on our general health. We have to identify some personal stressors. So, finding a precious causes of stress in our lives is the first step in learning how to manage it. These stressors might differ from person to person and could include the pressures from the workplace, the difficulties in relationships, the worries about money or some health issues. So, we need to understand these pressures uh, which allow us to adjust our coping strategies accordingly. Now, coping mechanisms for the stress. The first is the healthy living practices. Leading a healthy lifestyle is essential for managing the stress. So, this includes getting enough amount of sleep each night, maintaining a healthy diet, and engaging in a regular exercise regime. So, stress can be better managed by a healthy physique. The second is your relaxation methods. Using relaxation methods can actually assist lowering the stress levels and the body and the mind can relax by engaging in deep breathing exercises and gradual muscular relaxation the yoga, meditation or other relaxation techniques. The next most important is your time management. Time management techniques that work can reduce the stress, setting realistic objectives, prioritizing the chorus and breaking them down into smaller achievable steps that can really help you feel less overwhelmed and more in control. The next is your seeking social support. Now, speaking with friends, relatives or support groups can really help you feel better when things are difficult. Now, sharing our worries with others and asking for advice from a reliable source can actually ease the weight and offer some new insights. Next is your cognitive restructuring. Now, fighting against some unfavorable ideas, adopting a positive outlook can have a big impact on how stressed we are. Reducing anxiety and boosting the resilience can be achieved by recognizing some illogical or harmful beliefs and replacing them with some more realistic and uplifting ones. Next we have is participating in hobbies and relaxation activities. The hobbies, creating endeavors and the time spent in the nature are all excellent ways to unwind and relieve stress. By participating in the, these activities, we can unwind and have fun while turning our focus away from concerns. So we can say, the ability to cope with the stress helps us in enabling to face the challenges of the life and resiliency and to retain our well-being. 
We can effectively manage and lower our stress levels by comprehending the stress, identifying the personal stressors and putting the various coping mechanisms into practice. So keep in mind that stress is a normal part of life. But yes, how you handle it determines how successful we are. Now let us talk about some practicing self-care which is most important and love yourself that is self-compassion. Now these two things are very critical to prioritize that is one the self-care and fostering a self-compassion in our busy demanding life. Now these routines support a very healthy relationship with our, with our own selves and build resilience and foster our general well-being. So we will discuss the value of self-care and self-compassion and offer a doable tips for applying them in our everyday lives. So let us first understand what is a self-care. The activities and the routines that enhance one's physical, mental and emotional well-being are included in self-care. Now it entails choosing the actions that refresh and revital us and assisting in the restoration of the balanced amidst the stresses of our daily lives. So self-care is not selfish, rather it is very crucial for preserving a good health and avoiding a burnout. Next we have is the elements of self-care. So the first is your physical self-care. It's important to take care of our physical body. Now this entails obtaining enough rest, consuming the nutritious food, exercising frequently and taking care of our personal hygiene requirements. Now making the physical health a priority improves a general well-being. Next is your emotional self-care. It is very important to acknowledge and value our feelings. The process emotions and build the resilience by partaking in activities that enhance the emotional health such as the journaling, counseling, spending time with loved ones and practicing the mindfulness. Now coming on to a mental self-care. Taking care of our medical health entails doing the things that stretches and challenge our intellect. So this can be reading, engaging in the artistic endeavors, picking up the new skills or doing things that help you unwind mentally like crossword puzzles or mediation. The social self-care. A vital component of self-care is establishing and keeping a healthy connections. A sense of community and emotional support are fostered through establishing the supportive relationships with the friends, family and members of like-minded communities. Now, understanding self-compassion. The self-compassion entails being compassionate, considerate and accepting towards one's own self, especially through the difficult or self-critical movements. It requires accepting our flaws and being human, as well as showing ourselves the same care we would show to a loved one. Let us see how do we practice a self-compassion. The first is developing a self-awareness. Being self-aware helps us to spot when we are being judgmental or self-critical. Being aware of your own inner dialogue enables us to intervene and switch out a self-critical ideas for self-compassionate ones. The second is developing a self-forgiveness. One of the most important component of self-compassion is accepting that we make errors and practicing forgiveness. The self-compassion and forgiveness encourage the development and resiliency. Next is your promoting self-kindness. Self-kindness is a practice of loving and caring for own self. 
This can be doing things what we enjoy, that is treating ourselves or just allowing ourselves time to unwind and rejuvenate. Next is your accepting imperfection. Accepting that we cannot achieve perfection allows us to accept our flaws and the shortcomings. The self-compassion and the personal development are facilitated by accepting our humanity and growing from our errors. Let us now do the benefits of self-care and self-compassion. There are numerous advantages come from self-care and self-compassion practices. It develops a positive self-image, boosts the resilience, encourages the healthy relationships and improves the overall well-being. So we can develop a very happier and more rewarding relationships with our own self and others around us by prioritizing a self-care and engaging in self-compassion exercises. So we can say that in today's hectic environment, practicing a self-care and self-compassion is very crucial, critical for sustaining our well-being. We take care of our physical, mental and emotional health by implementing a self-care practices into our daily routines and practicing a self-compassion. So keep in mind that emphasizing a self-care and treating ourselves with kindness, we develop a loving and forgiving connection with our own self, promoting a general contentment and the pleasure. Let us now do a very important topic that is building positive relationships. Our general happiness and the well-being depends on having a very healthy relationships throughout our lives. They aid in our development as individuals and they offer assistance when we face difficulties and strengthen our sense of community. So in this particular part, we will look at the value of forming a good relationships and talk about how do we do so through nurturing and fostering a meaningful connections with the other people. So understanding the positive partnerships is another important aspect. The mutual respect, the trust, clear communication and support. Yes, these are the pillars and the characteristics of having a positive partnerships. They cover a wide range of connections such as friendship, relationships with people on a romantic, family, formal and work-related levels. These connections support our social and emotional health. So let us start with some strategies for building the positive relationships. The effective communication is the cornerstone of any successful relationships. Understanding and connecting are facilitated through active listening, clear communication and being open and honest. A deeper connection is cultivated by frequently checking in with individuals and demonstrating a genuine interest in their lives. Next is your mutual respect and empathy. Establishing healthy relationship requires the respect. An environment that is safe and encouraging is the one that values the people's perspective, respect their boundaries, recognizes their autonomy. Deeper connections are fostered by practicing empathy, trying to comprehend others' viewpoints and validating their emotions. Next is your establishing a trust. Strong relationships, they are built on a foundation of trust. Being dependable, keeping your word, preserving your privacy, they are the examples of trustworthiness. It takes some time and consistency and open communication to develop the trust. Next is we have the conflict resolution. 
For relationships to develop, the problems must be resolved in a courteous and constructive way. Finding a very common ground, actively listening and seeking deeper connections, they are fostered through being receptive to criticism and resolving the conflicts with empathy and compassion. The next is your quality time and the shared activities. Spending time on shared experiences and activities, they help relationships to grow. Sharing interest-based activities, they foster the connection and foster the creation of the shared memories. The positive connections are cultivated organically by setting aside the quantity time, the quality time frequently and striking a balance between the individual and the shared interest. Next is we have a support and encouragement. It's very important to offer the support and also the encouragement to others during the happy and of course the difficult times. Fostering a sense of belonging and enhancing the emotional ties involves being present for the people, supplying a listening ear to them and of course acknowledging their accomplishments. Next is we have respecting the personal boundaries and taking care of oneself are very crucial for preserving a healthy partnerships. There has to be a good balance between providing and receiving assistance which can be achieved by acknowledging and sharing our needs. So taking care of our own self enables us to present a truthfully and maintaining a strong relationships. Now there are some important benefits of having the good relationships. Having good relationship in our lives have several advantages. They support us emotionally, boost our self-esteem, lower our stress levels and generally improve our happiness and also our well-being. The positive interactions also help us develop personally, build our social networks, provide possibilities for learning and of course the collaborations. So hence we can say at the end, a full and meaningful existence is fundamentally based on developing a positive relationships. We can cultivate a solid and dependable connections by practicing one, good communication, two, reciprocal respect, three, empathy and fourth, devoting time and effort to fostering the connections. We need to remember this. While maintaining a healthy relationships, it requires a continual dedication, comprehension and the work. The benefits that you derive from a healthy partnerships, they are priceless. So we need to understand this, that how we need to develop the good relationship and the possible and the potential benefits what we get after organically moving on with the healthy and positive relationships. Thank you so much.